Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. You're gonna catch a cold if you sleep here. Akago sat down on the beach chair next to mine. I'll go back after watching this. What are you watching? Why don't you have a look too? Picked up the pamphlet, opening the page with the descriptions of constellations and handed it to her. Oh! Ah, right. The sky's different on the southern hemisphere. Chameleon. Mensa. Octans. Apis. Can't see those four back home. These southern constellations sure have weird names. It seems like most southern constellations were named during the Age of Discovery. It was during that time that European sailors first arrived on these shores. Unlike the northern constellations that were usually named after ancient myths and legends, the southern ones were named after ship parts, scientific tours, and newly discovered animals. Oh, cool! Over there! Akko pointed to a spot just a little east of the Centaurus constellation. There are so many bright stars over there. Is it a constellation too? I think it's the Southern Cross. Ah, the one on the coins, right? Going clockwise from the bottom, it's the Southern Cross's Alpha Star, Beta Star, Gamma Star, and Delta Star. What's that in the middle? It's a Southern Cross Epsilon, I think. It looks pretty bright from here. Kinda. The reason the Southern Cross is easy to spot is because its Alpha Star, Alpha Crucis, and its Beta Star, Mimosa, are among the 21 first magnitude stars in our sky. Magnitude stars? Sure know a lot about this stuff. It was all written on the pamphlet. Oh. <laughs> Akago turned the pamphlet over and gave it a long, hard look. Incidentally, Alpha Crucis is 321 light years away from us. So its light comes from 300 years before we were born, huh? That's amazing. Akago picked up a glass from the table next to her and raised it to eye level. 300 years. Tilted the glass slightly. I regarded her for a few moments until she started to blush. Medic, I need help. It's too late. Might as well give up. Okay. <laughs> you know you won't be able to finish. Don't even start. Well, it's just the two of us here anyway, so nothing to be too self-conscious about. Just don't make a fool of yourself in front of people next time. Maybe an alien hundred and twenty-one years in the past had already seen it all. It would need one amazing telescope to achieve that. Huh. Wonder if there's someone that's just like looking at us right now. Like a billion light years away or something. That'd be amazing. From like super telescope. Well, you know what they say, even the walls have ears, a god might have still been watching us or something, right? Maybe. If we placed a huge mirror on that star, would we be able to see the speech from 642 years ago? Ah, huh. Perhaps. If you want to test that, how about trying with multiple mirrors in an even better telescope? Ah, uh, I see. Uh, mm-hmm. As Takago fell in thought, silence returned to our tranquil abode. Although it was already too dark to see, I could hear the incessant sound of waves brushing against the beach and the poles supporting our cottage. If I listened more carefully, I could also make out a cacophony of fauna and the rustling of trees from the beach. Tachi! I shifted my gaze back to Takago and found her looking directly at me. What? I don't have a mirror here, so just look at my eyes for a little. Anything? It's too dark to see. Not surprised. Your eyes are darker than the night itself. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Aww. They had a romantic moment. Under the stars. Aww. Seabed.
Um, is wait. It's wearing all black. Uh oh. And there were those were flowers, right? Oh. Uh. I turned the handle to stop the rain. Several drops of water trailed down my body and fell onto the bathroom floor. The faint afternoon glow filtered in through the small bathroom window and met the steam inside, blanketing the room in a pale blue light. A rubber duck was floating in the half-filled bathtub I'd forgotten to unplug. After gazing at it for a few moments through half-shut eyes, I lifted a towel off the rack and left the bathroom while scrubbing my skin with a thing. Once I felt dry enough to, for comfort, I put on the underwear I'd left on the dryer. Ouch! Hit my shin against a box in the corridor while drying my hair. I raised my hurt leg and proceeded to hop the rest of the way on one foot, kicking a roll of packing tape out of the way in the process. Out of the multiple boxes in the corridor, the one I collided with had yet to be fastened. Hako's sunflower-themed shirt stared back at me from inside. Huh. So, did they get back home? What happened? Why, why did we get that scene? Oh no, I have a bad feeling for some reason. I opened the door at the end of the corridor and upon entering the living room, turned left to the kitchen and peeked into the fridge. After grabbing a bottle of barley tea from inside, I closed the fridge's door. I took a glass cup from the cupboard, filled it up with tea and gulped its contents down a single breath. After refilling my cup and returning the bottle to the fridge, I continued to the living room with glass in hand where I picked up the remote from the table and flicked on the TV. I pulled out the makeup box and the hair dryer from the cabinet and made myself comfortable on the sofa. I began drying my hair, catching only short bits and pieces of what the news anchor on TV was saying. Finishing that, I changed into a pair of jeans and a colorful tunic before finally leaving the house. Um. That will be 300 yen. I placed the coins I had prepared as I waited in line into the tray. Thank you very much. Shop clerk took care of the basket while I picked up the paper bag. I left the general store and continued down the sidewalk. It was now illuminated by a slightly stronger light compared to the morning. As the traffic signal between the police station and the department store lit up in green, a mass of people who had been waiting for it jerked forward like a wave. As I tried to overtake a man in front of me, our shoulders bumped. It seemed like the amount of people doubled here during afternoons. I continued crossing the street looking down at the shoes of the people ahead of me as my paper bag bumped into someone to my side. I stopped and placed my bag, paper bag into my handbag. You'll get hit by a car if you keep spacing out in the middle of the street, Sachi. Raised my face in response to clearly hearing my name. However, the person to whom that voice belonged to was nowhere to be seen. I turned to a narrow alley, in two large buildings, leaving the street behind me as I continued on. I glanced at my wristwatch. In the time, I decided to hasten my pace. Uh oh. I have a really bad feeling. Really bad feeling. I'm, like, I'm getting goosebumps, it, like chills, just like, thinking about it. Bell above the cafe's door gave off an energetic chime as I stepped inside. Oh. So, okay, wh why am I getting these chills and feelings? Okay, so... Oh. I don't know. Something's not right with that scene with the... They're wearing all black and rain and umbrella, right? Oh, that's just me. As the establishment's front door was down a short flight of stairs below street level, it naturally had no windows and was dimly lit inside. 
while lights would be on all the time, coloring the interior red and orange. Continuing further into the shop, my footsteps silenced by the lush carpet. Oh man. So, what I'm feeling is that something it has happened to to uh, Ta Takako, right? This is, this is my feeling right now. So, got a scene where she was in all black. It's raining, umbrella, there were flowers. I feel like there was an accident that happened. And from that line that she said, um, you, know, you should pay attention to your surroundings or you'd be hit by the car. I believe that was from Takako. And this is just what I believe happened is this must this must be further down the, in the future than what we just experienced uh, before. He must have must have not been paying attention to the, to the uh, to the street, and an incoming car came. Not uh yeah, and he was about to get hit by the car. And and um, I think that was and that might be right before uh, Taco said that to Sachi. You know, you might be you might get hit by a car. You know, just pay attention. And then the car came, and then she pushed her out of the way, and that's why she heard the voice. She heard her name, but no one was there. So that must be some sort of memory that happened, some sort of traumatic memory that she remembers that one line. I hope I hope I'm wrong that she's okay, but that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, I really hope I'm wrong. <sighs> but anyways, we'll find out why we are in this little um, the restaurant next episode. The restaurant establishment. If you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye.